And just like that, I have a two-year-old. What's a bargain family? Welcome back to my channel. The next time you're in Dollar Tree, grab a laundry basket and balloons. I'm gonna share with you some party decor hacks using Dollar Tree supplies and my Cricut. Blow up your balloons first. I use an air pump I got from Amazon for around $25. And I'm gonna be attaching the balloons to the laundry basket by using these balloon clips. They clip onto the balloon and then with the other end, I just hook it onto the laundry basket. I ended up making some smaller balloons and these ones I used to cover up any gaps where you could still see the laundry basket. And I used balloon glue dots from Dollar Tree to attach them to the other balloons. Now I got this paper towel holder from Dollar Tree and I'm going to attach it to my laundry basket by using some zip ties I also got at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start zip tying some of these balloon sticks I also got from Dollar Tree to the paper towel holder. I'm gonna be attaching balloons on the top of this and this is gonna make them look like they're floating without using helium. The balloon sticks come with these little plastic pieces that you wrap around the base of the balloon and that's how you attach them to the balloon sticks. I then placed a teddy bear on top of the laundry basket so it looks like it's floating on a cloud. I want to customize my balloons. To do this, I'm gonna be using my Cricut Explore Air 3 and I'm gonna open up Cricut Design Space on my computer. That's a free software you use to create your project. My son is having an ABC themed birthday party. So I went into Cricut Images. There's over 250,000 images to choose from. I type ABC and find an image that I like. I then click add to canvas and this transfers the image to the canvas. I wanted the letters all to be white so I changed the color. I made a few other designs and once they're ready to cut, I click make it. This will bring you to a page where you choose the material your project is going to cut on. I chose without matte because I'll be using Cricut Smart Vinyl which is a vinyl you load directly into the machine, you don't need a mat. Then hit continue. This is going to bring you to a page where you choose your base material. I then load my Cricut up with the Smart Vinyl and let the Cricut do its magic. Once all the vinyl is cut, I take a weeder, which is a tool you use to remove any unwanted vinyl and just start removing the unwanted vinyl. These pieces from the Cricut that I made are bigger pieces and not very intricate. So I can just lift them right off of the plastic that they're on and place them directly on the balloons. And this is how I used a Dollar Tree laundry basket to make a balloon centerpiece and customize the balloons with my Cricut. It's an easy, beautiful piece that is perfect for birthday parties, baby showers, or gender reveals. Remember, you don't have to make a centerpiece if you don't want to. Dollar Tree carries balloons already blown up at the front. You can use your Cricut to customize these real easily too and just have them floating around. Now I'm sure you're wondering how I made those jumbo letters and images you see in the back. When you're in Dollar Tree, pick up foam board. In Cricut Design Space, I click text and I start typing out some letters. I want there to be what is kind of like a border behind the letters. To do this, I click offset and that's going to create what looks like a border. I then messed around with changing the colors to figure out exactly what I wanted. Once I was done, again, I click make it and this will bring me to the page where I choose my cutting material. I chose on a mat this time and it's going to be a 12 by 24 inch mat. Once all the pages load, I hit continue to choose my cutting material. I'll be using glitter and light cardstock for these projects. The first project I cut is glitter card Stock. So I go into browse materials and I choose glitter card stock. To cut my card stock, I'll be using a light grip mat, which is the blue mat. I load the Cricut with my mat, let it do the cutting, and then I use my fingers to remove the card stock. Once I have cut out all of my letters and borders, it's time to glue them to the foam board. I use Elmhurst Craft Bond glue to do this. I then glue down my other pieces of the letter on top of the border and wait for the pieces to dry. Once they dry, I take an X-Acto knife and I cut out my letter. To get my letters to stand, I glued wood blocks to the back from Dollar Tree. I repeated these steps with every letter I cut out and now I have these jumbo letters perfect for a kid's birthday party. Now you might be wondering how I made the other jumbo cutouts, so let me share that. I typed in Apple into images and selected one. Since I know I want this to be wider, I need to make my apple into pieces. First, I right click over the apple and choose ungroup to see the different layers of the apple. I don't need all of the layers entirely, so I click shapes on the left hand of the screen and choose any honestly. I take the shape and place it over where I want an area of the layer removed. I then select the shape and the layer, 
right click and select slice. This slices up the images so I can select the pieces I don't want and delete them. When it comes to the main image of the apple, I chose a rectangular shape and sliced down the middle so I have two bigger pieces of the apple to cut. Basically, this is the exact same thing as before. I used my glue to attach it to the foam board. There's a few more pieces because I did different slices and layers to this. Then I take my X-Acto knife and I cut out the shape. I then go ahead and I glue some wood pieces to the back so that the apple stands straight. Now I decided to make a car that was pretty big. So if you make something that is like wider or even taller, you might need two pieces of foam board. All you have to do in this case is attach the foam board by the back just using some tape. I did that with the car and then I used my X-Acto knife again to cut it out. This time around I'm using these jumbo wood blocks to keep the car upright just because I needed something with a little bit more weight. I also used some foam to create these little pieces that you see that say Cooper. I had to attach everything together using some craft glue and then I glued it to the front of my car and to some other pieces like a rainbow that I made for Cooper. You'll never know how the weather is going to be till the day of so if it ends up being a really windy day get the wood plaques from Dollar Tree and attach the cubes that you put on the back of your foam to the plaques and this is going to give it a better base to stand on just in case it gets real windy which in our case it ended up being windier so I had to put plaques on quite a few pieces. As you see, you can make smaller pieces that work well for centerpieces or bigger pieces that work really well for your main table, the sweets table, the gift table, wh wh wherever you wanna put it. Using my Cricut, I'm able to save so much more money while I was doing this and for years to come. I can continue to use the Cricut to make these custom pieces versus buying them. And when you're buying something custom, especially with a name, it's really expensive. One of my favorite things to do with the Cricut is customize t-shirts. And right now you can find so many t-shirts in solid different colors at Dollar Tree. So I picked up one that I'm gonna use for Cooper. This time around, I'm gonna click templates on the left side of the screen. And this is going to bring me to a bunch of templates of clothing and accessories three pieces. I chose pajamas, which is basically a child's onesie. And this is going to work really well for the sizing of what I need. There was a shirt I kept getting recommended to me in Google ads that I wanted to recreate. To do this, I chose a shape that I liked. And then I typed out two. I then placed the text over the shape. Then I select both layers, the text and the shape. I right click slice and this will slice up this into a bunch of layers. I remove the ones that I don't want and keep the one that I do want. Once I know what size I want it to be, I click make it. And again, I'm gonna go with without matte because I'll be using the smart iron on. Before I cut it, I click mirror on the left hand corner. This is going to mirror the image so that it goes on my t-shirt the correct way. Then I clicked smart iron on and you will see that there's an alert there saying to make sure you mirror it. This is important. Next up, I go into Cricut's heat guide. I choose the machine I'm using, which is the Cricut Easy Press 2. Then I choose the base material I'm using and the material of the clothing I'm using, which is cotton. This will tell me how high I should make the temp and how many seconds I should keep the Easy Press on my material for. So I set my heat press to 315 degrees for 30 seconds. Before applying my iron on, I use the heat press to remove any wrinkles. Now you need a material to go between your project and the heat press. I just use the bag my press came in. I place it on the shirt and then place the heat press on top of the shirt. I click the C, which is the Cricut button, and that starts the countdown. And I just put a light firm pressure to the press. After 30 seconds, I remove the press and wait for the iron on to cool down. Then I just peel off the plastic and that's it. I have this t-shirt that looks so cute on Cooper and I still have a bunch of iron on left over that I honestly could use for years, for years and years and years when it comes to his birthday. I could do three next year, four next year and just continue the tradition. Lemon. Tastes like a lemon. Mm. Is it yummy? Mm. Tasty. Tasty. One of my favorite party supplies to buy at Dollar Tree are their candy bowls. They have such a big selection of different styles of bowls, different colors, and it's really easy to customize these with your Cricut to a theme that fits your event or birthday party, whatever it might be. This time around, I went into Cricut Images, chose a rectangle shape, then I went ahead and typed out the text that I wanted to be on the front of the rectangles, and then I did a few ABC type of stickers. And I cut all of these pieces 
pieces on some smart vinyl. To get your words to transfer, just as you see them, use Cricut's transfer tape. Place it on top of your vinyl and rub your Cricut scraper over the vinyl and transfer tape. The pieces that are just one bigger piece, I use my fingers to place them directly on top of the candy bowls. And then for the letters, I just take the transfer tape, place it over the bowl, rub it in, and then take the transfer tape off. Next up, I just use my fingers to place the A, B, C letters I had cut out. B. Remember, you don't have to just put candy inside of these, and Dollar Tree carries other bowls that you can use for things like punch or chips. And that's how I customize my bowls from Dollar Tree to fit my theme for Cooper's birthday party. And I actually did this last year too, using the Cricut for his Sesame Street themed birthday party with the Dollar Tree candy bowls. This is actually a hack I did last year for Cooper's birthday party. What you're gonna do is pick up some tablecloths from Dollar Tree. If you can't find the colors you need, you can go to Walmart to carry them for the same price. Also pick up a broomstick from Dollar Tree. Unravel and unfold your tablecloth. Place it underneath the broomstick, and then the very top you are going to wrap around the broomstick. Now you can tape this into place. I actually decided to use zip ties, so I pushed the zip tie through the plastic of the tablecloth and tied it into place. That way I could slide this around easily versus taping it where it might tape it off that I can't slide it around. I didn't make the zip ties too tight, so I would have an easier time sliding around the tablecloths and messing around with this when I finally hung it on our wall outside. If you wanna make this longer, just use more broomsticks. And to hang this, I just used command hooks outside. I placed them on the wall out there and then hung them off of the command hooks. So this is not from this year. Like I said, this is from last year. I just had it on the back wall. Now get some toothpicks from Dollar Tree. You're gonna create some custom cupcake or cake toppers using these. I just used glitter cardstock to cut out some pieces that say Cooper. This particular design I made, I had to glue individual letters to the background pieces, but you can always attach your text so that it's one larger piece that you glue down to your background piece. Once I have everything glued together, I take my toothpicks and I start to glue them to the back of my cardstock. I have seen customized pieces like this retail for so much and I was able to make this using two pieces of cardstock that came in a pack and I still have a whole lot of cardstock left over and different colors left over remember you can also use your Cricut to make cake toppers and I will link the person who made my cake down in the description box her Instagram just in case you're interested and you're in the Chicagoland area finally here's another idea to easily customize the organizing bins to give as gift baskets you can even use the gift bags from Dollar Tree which I did last year for Cooper's birthday party you can use your Cricut to cut out the name of the child that the basket will go to because I'm doing an ABC themed birthday Birthday party I did a B C D E all around the baskets and then I filled this up I did some coloring books I got lucky and I was in Target the bullseye playground clearance at 75% off so I found these balloon guns for 75 cents I was really excited about that so I just filled it up with some items and that's how I did some customized gift baskets for the children and I think this is a neat idea because the kids can keep it use it in their bedroom to organize different things well not necessarily the children organizing but the parents Lastly, I want to share with you guys how I make my balloon arches to really help you save some money in that department. I tend to get balloon arch kits from Amazon or I try to get better quality balloons. Cooper's birthday is in July. We've had his past two birthday parties outside, so it gets really, really hot. I don't want to use the Dollar Tree balloons out there because they pop more easily in heat. So get good quality balloons or get something from Amazon. And I just use this air pump again that I got from Amazon to blow up all of my balloons then I use the balloon strips you can get these at Dollar Tree sometimes they come with your balloon arch kit and what you do is there are little circles on these strips you push your balloon through those circles and then slide it over so they really hook onto the strips and I do this and I just kind of rotate the colors that I'm using and what side I'm placing the balloons on so I keep just kind of rotating that around until I have a balloon arch to hang my arch up outside, I use these 
command strips that I got from Amazon. They are the best command strips for outside use. The adhesive is really strong, so I wouldn't put that on your wall inside of your house. But outside, yes, it is amazing. And I'll link them down below for you guys. They're awesome for tying down your balloon arches. But that's how I got my balloon arch up. So that's how I made most of the decorations for my son's birthday party. Join me in wishing Cooper a happy second birthday. Thanks to Cricut for sponsoring this video. And I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.